For the record, this matter is before the court on the uh, plaintiff. Well, there's motion to modify parenting time and to show cause for contempt. This hearing is being conducted via Zoom. The President Attorney Ron Bruce, representing the plaintiff mother, Rebecca Alexander. Ms. Alexander appears to be present. In addition, Defendant Father Jacob Gladden appears to be present. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Jake. The parties have conferred with Mr. Pratt for the third court this morning. Mr. Pratt has provided the court with the following recommendation. The recommendation simply notes that mother has had two phone calls per week. And the mother shall have two phone calls per week, Wednesdays and Saturdays at 6.30 p.m. And the mother may reach out to the minor child, Delia, Delilah, via text. The parties shall communicate with each other regarding app close, only regarding the minor child. The parties, namely the parents and Delilah, shall attend therapy together at the request of an agreed upon counselor. It's further noted that the child is currently enrolled in schools in person. That is a recommendation. If the court recalls there was a rec roughly recommended order, which was actually agreed to by the parties back in December of 2023, which Changed physical custody from plaintiff mother to defendant father. Was there ever an objection to that recommended order filed, Mr. Pratt? Do you know? Not that I see, Your Honor. Okay. Um, and Mr. Bruce, you've alleged that uh, dad has withheld the parenting time for the past uh, two months. Uh, the recommended order. And the parties agreed that the child uh, would remain at Monroe Public Schools. So uh, what do the parties do in creating their own, uh, their own orders? Judge, it's my client entered that agreement with the assumption that dad was given temporary physical custody. I believe that's what the recommended order provides for. It also provided for the child to go in Monroe County uh, online schools. Uh, my client assumed that that would be followed she's asking the court to have the child put back in Monroe schools uh, so she never agreed to this uh, change in school of course yes record or just say temporary but that's until further of the court so right now dad has physical custody so the child should be with dad and the child's been with mom for the last two months is that correct been with dad the last two months Mom hasn't had much contact, if any, in that time. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, father's withheld parenting time the last two months, but uh, father has uh, has temporary as physical custody uh, since the last month and a half, correct? Right. Um, the recommended order of the referee, which was not objected to, uh, does not provide for parenting time for mother. Is that correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Pratt, your recommendation is that mom's parenting time would be uh, just phone calls. Is that correct? At this point in time? Your Honor, at this point in time, phone calls, um, some text messaging that mom would initiate, and then the counseling. I think mom agrees that the counseling needs to occur. Okay. Uh, who will initiate to contact in and uh, de determine the identity of a counselor? Will mom do that? Ms. Alexander, will, will you initiate selected a counselor or Mr. Gladden? You got temporary physical custody. I guess uh, you should be the one initiating that. Find a counselor that uh, will take your insurance. Uh, Mr. Bruce perhaps can recommend a counselor at the front of the court. Your caseworker perhaps can recommend some counselor, family counseling counselors. That's right. The two of you need to be on the same page. You need to be on the same page before we leave this session this morning. So who's going to investigate and select the counselor? I have tried I to the judge. I can't agree on it. Can you speak up? I, I, I was not able to uh, Sir, understand I can your response. Honor, or we can find someone that we agree on. Well, you've got a joint legal, so you need to agree upon that, that counselor, but you, somebody's got to initiate the contact and identify a party and reach out to the other. So I should have counseling going on now. Child's in counseling. My client's in counseling. I think uh, they agreed to find a counselor to meet all three parties. Uh, I think Dad said he would initiate that. 
provide options for my client. All right. Okay, let's talk about uh, Delilah's school. Um, who enrolled Delilah in Westland schools? I did, Your Honor. You had no authority to do so. I understand. Mr. Gladden, you, you have joint legal custody. You cannot make that decision without uh, the the agreement of the other, without either the order of the court or the agreement of the other joint custodial parent. you got physical custody, but any major decision needs to be shared equally by the two of you. Medical decisions. You need to inform Ms. Alexander if the child's got a medical appointment and when that medical appointment is and with whom. With any prescribed medications. If the child goes to the emergency room, you need to notify mother. You cannot unilaterally just change schools. I understand, Your Honor. I, uh, Rebecca Alexander was notified of the change in schools, and it was because of the court order was to put Delilah into Monroe Public Schools online, but even the online program required five hours of in-person time, which I could not meet at this time. It's just a lot of driving around, so I enrolled them into Westland Public Schools as soon as possible. It's a lot of change for a young, uh, young person. Uh, how is she ad 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 adapting to Westland schools? Uh, very well. They're very excited. They make friends They're socially and academically. They're thriving. They enjoy their teachers. I have. I'm sorry. Testimony from them. So both I children. I, uh, so I'm sorry. We just talked one child. You talk about they. Uh, sorry, it's a gender neutral program or <clears throat> pronoun that I am just accustomed to. Gotcha. All right. Okay. So she seems to be very comfortable in that environment? Yes. All right. Um, Mr. Bruce, your client opposed to the child continuing at Westland schools? I believe she is, Judge. The child's been in uh, Monroe School for years. Uh, there's definitely no issue putting her back in Monroe schools. Uh, she was there for years prior to dad moving, yeah, moving them. Um, it's only been five, six weeks since he moved them. I don't see why there'd be any issue in uh, putting them back. <laughs> well, this court personally believes that in-person school is better than online or virtual. Um, perhaps it's best for the child to to be in person. And yeah. Mr. Glad, you're, you're saying that she she prefers to be, or your child prefers to be in, uh, in person rather than virtual? Yeah. I'm sorry, they were going to in-person school prior to all of this. That was just the solution for the time being while Jaden would go to counseling. Um, they were in person in Monroe Public Schools up until this point. Like before this happened, they were going in person to Monroe Middle. And the online was a suggestion, well, what we agreed upon, like while they go to counseling, that was the point that it was like a temporary transition until we can get them into counseling. Okay, and, and so what was the problem with the online program at Monroe Public Schools, Mr. Gladden? Uh, the Monroe online program requires five hours of in-person time a week. And with my work schedule and just the distance, that was not feasible at the time. Well, we're not concerned about your work, we're, we're not concerned about your work schedule. We're concerned about the best interest of the child. I understand, but when the court order was made that no one spe uh, specifically mentioned the five hours of in-person time, it wasn't of it all. I mean, Judge, my client was objected. If, he, if the whole idea was to say he's going to enroll him in online schools and then say it's not convenient and then enroll him in Westland schools, my client never would have agreed to that order. That's the sole reason. I, mean, I wouldn't have agreed that. to enroll him in online schools if I knew there was a five hour in person requirement. Agreed. Is that five hours per week? Yes. You're on. Um, and you're saying that five hours per week conflicts with your work schedule? Uh, at the time that, that it was started, yes, sir. You're on. Well, but she's attending in-person school more than five hours a week right now. I understand, but I am not responsible for deriving them there, and it is not over an hour away. I, I'll tell you, who drives them to school? The bus, <laughs> you're on it. Okay, okay, so bus. And the, uh, there was no bus transportation available. Um, I see. Uh, you live in Westland. I see. Well, the two of you agreed to that. <sighs> Ms. Alexander, have you talked with your child? Did, did, does uh, everything seem to be going well with Westland schools? I haven't had yes, any contact with them. 
Dad changed the number, so mom hasn't had any contact. Miss Alexander, Miss Alexander, I got a question for you. Okay. So if Mr. Bruce and Ms. Glad won't interrupt, Mr. Alexander, have you talked with your child regarding this change to Westland schools? I have not spoken them to them at all. Like I've had no contact with them. Jacob changed your child. Number. Yes. Have you, have with you my talk child. with your child. I have let me, not. Let me say it for the third all. time. Miss Alexander, have you had any discussion with your child regarding this recent how she's doing in Westland schools? No, I have not had any contact with them. I have not been able to. Okay. Does no they change the contact? phone number? They changed the phone number. She had no ability to contact them, hence the motion. <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm having some connectivity issues. So if it's like, if there's a delay, it's it's because my video feedback is a little weird. Do you now have your child's phone number? I do not. Okay. Um, Mr. Gladden, can you provide that phone number? I can, Your Honor. Uh, may I do that in writing after this meeting? May I do it right now. I mean, I Miss um, Alexander should has a right to know that phone number. Why would you not provide that phone number? Uh, under Delilah's request. And the reason the number is new is because the phone that was provided by Rebecca Alexander was disabled and she asked for it to be returned. Your Honor, we did discuss that in the breakout room and I did direct dad to text that to mom so mom has the number. Okay. All right, so that's fine. If you want to text it to her then uh, when we get done here, that's fine, Mr. Gladden. That would be great. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, but uh, should we put in this order then, Ms. LaPrade, that the dad shall provide the uh, Delilah's phone number? Um, yes, sir. Uh, so, so that uh, it's real clear Mr. Gladden has that obligation. Ms. LaPrade, what's your thoughts on this uh, change of school? It's uh, out done with that. Mr. Gladden had no authority to do so, didn't consult the joint custodial parent. Contrary to the rec the order of this court. So, Your Honor, we did discuss that in the in the breakout room. Um, my position would be that at this point, because it's the it's already done. So, in my opinion, ping ponging Delilah back to Monroe may do more harm than good at this point, which is why I did not make a recommendation on it and just noted for the record that Father did against court order change the school, but I, I don't know that it's beneficial to Delilah to change the school yet again. As a practical matter, it's, uh, it's, uh, I understand that. Uh, Mr. When did Delilah begin school at Westland? Was it the 1st of January? Uh, no, it was December. Okay. Uh, have, uh, have you received any progress reports? Anything from, from the school teachers in terms of uh, verifying her performance and how she's doing? Um, at this point, they're still in the middle of their first semester, full semester there. And I haven't gotten any progress reports at this time. All right. Um, Ms. Alexander, obviously, you should reach out to the school and make sure that you are listed as emergency contacts and so forth. Did you, did you, uh, when you fill out paperwork, Mr. Gladden, did you list Ms. Alexander as an emergency contact? Uh, I do believe so. Well, well, either you did or you didn't. Uh, it was months ago, Your Honor. So if the court ordered to go back to Monroe Public Schools, how would you get her there, Mr. Gladden? Well, my shift has changed. I suppose that I could drive them there if the court would like, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Pratt, is it possible someone from your office could uh, interview Delilah regarding how she's doing in this new school. It's practically if she's, I, I want to keep bouncing around. I, the court is, is not pleased that Mr. Gladden took it upon himself to make this decision without an order of the court or the agreement of Ms. Alexander. Uh, so I'm wondering if we can uh, make it so for two weeks and have the child interviewed. And uh, if in fact, um, if Delilah expressed interest wants to go back to Monroe, that's what the court's going to do. Um, I can interview her tomorrow afternoon after school if someone can get her here. Okay. I'm so Mr. sorry. Gladden, I can, can interview you, Delilah. Can, 
All right, Mr. Gladden, can you drive uh, Delilah to the Minoka in front of the court tomorrow afternoon? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, what time do you propose, uh, Mr. Pratt? Um, after school. I don't know what time she gets out of school, Mr. Gladden. Uh, Delilah returns home around 3 p.m. And it takes me oh. about 40 minutes to get to Monroe. So we'll say 4 o'clock? Uh, yeah, after work. Thank you. And then if, if the court would like to provide me an adjourned date, I'll type it in this recommendation, Your Honor. Okay. Um, right. Ms. Alexander, Mr. Gladden, you both be present at 2 o'clock. It'll be Zoom. 2 p.m., Your Honor, on Friday. Yes. February 9th, correct. Mr. Glad, Ms. Alexander, you can both be present. Is that correct? It'll be Zoom. So uh, even if you're working, you can just step out and uh, Zoom in. I'm able to do that. Will that work with your schedules, Mr. Glad and Ms. Alexander? Yes. Okay. Okay, Mr. Glad, in order then to uh, produce and to present to uh, the to to uh, Ms. Uh, Pratt, Maroka from the court on Thursday, February 8th, uh, after school, I guess between 3 and 3.30. And then uh, the court will continue this matter February 9th at 2 p.m. Uh, pardon, Your Honor. You say that it was going to be an, uh, the interview with Delilah would be 3.30? Yeah. I'm sorry, Ms. After school, Mr. Pratt was saying about three o'clock, as soon as he can get down here, right? Jacob, as soon as you can get her off the bus and get her down here, that's fine. My it's afternoon, I'll be available. In the interim, I text uh, Miss Alexander with the Delilah's phone number. Yes, you are. And uh, mom can try to reach out to her tonight at 6 30. It's a Wednesday. Uh, see whether uh, uh, you need to be delicate, uh, uh, Miss Alexander. Maybe text her to see if she has, to, uh, if uh, you'd like to talk to her, and uh, see if she is, is uh, available to talk with you. Uh, maybe she's preferred texting. I don't know, but at least you can communicate with Delilah. Okay. Anything further, Mr. Bruce? No, Judge. <laughs> okay. All right. What's everyone then on Friday, February 9th? That now, Rebecca Alexander versus Jacob Gladden. On the record, this matter is before the court uh, for a review of a, a particular issue of uh, where the minor child of the party shall uh, attend high school. And again, the hearing is being conducted via Zoom. President's attorney, Ron Bruce, representing the plaintiffs of Mother Rebecca Alexander. Ms. Alexander is present, and uh, defendant father Jacob Gladden is also present. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the minor child uh, was interviewed by Ms. Pratt from the front of the court on uh, yesterday, which is February 8, 2024. She has provided the court with a recommendation that the child remain in school, which is part of the Wayne Westland Community School District. Uh, she has been there since December 2023, feels uh, established, comfortable there, and apparently she also advises that her grades have improved since the change of school. Uh, that is the recommendation. Um, the parties have uh, conferred with Mr. Walker from the front of the court. Mr. Walker is recommending that the recommendation be adopted, that the minor child shall continue to attend the Westland Community School District for the remainder of 2023-24 school year. Mother shall have parenting time every Saturday for a minimum of three hours. Mother shall have full contact with minor child every Wednesday and Friday at 6.30 p.m. That the parties appear back before this court to review parenting time and custody issues on March 12, 2024 at 10.30 a.m. Further that the parties appear before the court to review school issues on June 25, 2024 at 10.30 a.m. That is a recommendation. Uh, Mr. Bruce, is this recommendation agreeable with uh, your client this afternoon? It is, Judge. It is, Judge. All right. Uh, Mr. Gladden, do you understand the recommendation? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, are you agreeable with the recommendation? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um, uh, have we dealt previously with transportation for parenting time of uh, the minor child or parenting time? Mr. Bruce, do you uh, can you refresh the court's memory? Are they meeting? I think we touched on it briefly at mediation. I think. Uh, 
whatever client or whatever uh, parties uh, receiving the child would do the transporting. So my client would pick up the child and dad would pick up the child at the end of mom's time. Is that agreeable, Ms. Alexander, Mr. Gladden? Yes. Okay, just want to make sure everyone's on the same page before we leave uh, this afternoon. Um, Mr. Gladden, is there any other issues that need to be addressed this afternoon? I'm sorry, you're uh, you're muted. I couldn't hear you. No, okay, there we go. Mr. Bruce, anything further? No, Judge, thank you. All right, the court will adopt the recommendation and uh, uh, things will go well. And we'll put this back in our docket for March 12th at 1030 to review uh, custody and parenting time. All right, so that will, uh, Mr. Glad, you'll be mailed to copy this. All right, I can zoom out. That will conclude this hearing. For the record, this matter is before the court to review parenting time and custody issues. This hearing is being conducted via Zoom. The president is Attorney Ronald Bruce, representing the plaintiff, Mother Rebecca Alexander. Mr. Alexander is present. Uh, is Jacob Gladden president audio? No, Judge, uh, he had, did not appear. We did call her. My client did text him, um, and she did message him on the uh, close app that they uh, use, and uh, he did not respond or appear. It does appear that the defendant father, Jake Bladden, was present at the last hearing on February 9th, 2024. When the court uh, entered order scheduling this matter for review on today's date at 10 30, it's now 11 a.m. Um, the court also scheduled the hearing to review the school district issue back in there in, in the future, namely June 25, 2024, 10 30. Um, that order, of course, granted temporary possession of minor child to the defendant father, but uh, in limited parenting time to mother, Saturdays at, uh, for three hours. Um, And uh, Ms. Alexander, you, you texted uh, Jacob this morning to remind him that uh, we had court. He did, has not yet responded. Is that correct? That is correct. Mr. Bruce and Ms. Alexander, the court has received a fine recommendation this morning from Mr. Pred, noting that Mr. Gladden failed to appear. That mother should have uh, plenty of time with the minor child on Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. In addition, the phone calls will continue on Wednesdays and Fridays at 6.30 p.m. That was previously uh, uh, ordered. Is this recommendation agreed with your client this morning, Mr. Bruce? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Further, it's recommended that mother shall have reasonable phone contact with the minor child. The phone contact shall not be disruptive. Father shall encourage the minor child to be respectful to mother and encourage the relationship. Uh, so that's also part of the recommendation. Uh, what about transportation? Will mother pick up and drop off? I can do both, yes. Okay. Uh, Ms. Alexander, have you been exercising your Saturday, every Saturday, for any time for three hours? I have, and I noticed that Jake had submit a complaint saying that I wasn't going to attend March 2nd for my parenting time. This is something that I expressed to Jaden. I had said that my sister said that she was throwing a surprise birthday party for me, as well as my nephew who turned one years old. And I expressed to Jaden that I really liked to go. And it was kind of seeing like, I told him I didn't know what the court stuff and everything. I would like to take them because my, my family all lives in Illinois. I did not miss that parenting time. And I told them, like, I, you know, this is just what my sister said. It's, it's Llewellyn's birthday. And I had no intentions of missing my time with them. But the day before March 2nd, Jacob had told me in a message on the parenting app, because I expressed I wanted to spend more time with them, that I don't get a day, I don't have a day that anything over three hours is forcing them, and that they do not want to see me. And then when I spoke to Jaden about it, they said that the court had decided that I was an unfit parent, and that's why I only get three hours, and to use that time wisely. 
No one has determined you to be an unfit parent, ma'am. So that's simply not true. Um, so in the prior order back in February, we had parenting time three hours. I said you were picking up and dropping off. Is that correct? So the arrangement was I picked them up and then Jacob dropped them off, but I can do both. Okay, just there needs to be communication. Um, of course, Jacob lives up in uh, Westland. You live in Monroe. Was mm -hmm. it a 45 minute drive? I'm just willing to do what I can to see my child. That's all right. All. all right. Okay, well, it's noted for the record that you are willing to pick up and drop off. Um, um, all right, anything further this morning, Mr. Bruce? No, Judge, nothing. All right, so the court will adopt the recommendation. Uh, your period time will be still every Saturday, um, but it will be increased uh, from three hours to from now from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Judge, if I could, I yes. was going to ask for a review date. Um, if we could get one. We have a review date in June. You need something before oh, then? Oh, that's true. Um, no, that's fine. If we can include parenting time on that review. <sighs> yeah, we can, as far as course concerned, we can view anything uh, that needs to be addressed at that time. The June 25th date, so that will continue. Uh, June 25th at 10.30. All right, with that, court will adopt the recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Pratt, uh, Mr. Alexander. Uh, that will conclude this hearing. You can all zoom out. Have the rest of the day. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. For the record, this matter is before the court on the plaintiff's motion to modify child support. This uh, hearing is being conducted via Zoom. Present is Alexis Spencer representing the plaintiff petitioner, Megan Souza. Ms. Souza appears to be present with uh, Ms. Spencer. Good morning, Ms. Spencer. Good morning. In addition, the defendant father, Ricardo Martinez, uh, is also present. Good morning. Um, Good morning. Parties have, have conferred with uh, Ms. LaPrade from the front of the court this morning. Mr. Pratt is recommending that commencing January 1st, 2024, the defendant, Mr. Martinez, shall pay child support in the amount of $412 per month, $381 base support, uh, credit for uh, health care, $3, ordinary medical, $34, for a total of $412. Uninsured medical expenses shall be uh, shared as follows. A plaintiff, a mother paying 10%, defendant father paying 90%. Based upon uh, equal overnights, that is a recommendation. I believe support right now is 166, so it's a pretty significant increase. Um, Ms. Spencer, is this recommendation agreeable with your client this morning? Yes, it is. Thank you. All right, Mr. Martinez, are you do you understand the recommendation? Yes, I do. Are you do you have any objection to the court adopting this recommendation? No, Your Honor, I don't. Okay. Uh, obviously, if there's a change in income, either party can petition for a modification of support. There being no objection from either side, the court will currently adopt the recommendation. So until you see this increased amount coming out of your paycheck, Mr. Martinez, you need to, to pay it directly to the front of the court so you don't uh, build up a bigger rears. Understood. Uh, anything further this morning, Ms. Spencer? Um, no, thank you, Your Honor. I okay. actually, I just want to make sure that um, we check post majority support because the child will still be in school um, at the age of 18 and after. Okay. Well, you, you, you prepared the uniform child support order, correct? Oh, this is recommendation. Just, yeah, I just want to make sure it was on the record. So, yes, um, uh, you can address that and check the box in the uniform child support order. Obviously, Ms. Suzar did participate in the discussion. Do you want to wire deer her at all? Uh, no, thank you, Your Honor. All right. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pratt. That will close this matter. You'll be mailed a copy of this uh, order, Mr. Martinez. Thank you. Okay. okay. Have a good rest of the day. Um, Zoom out. Devin Martin. For the record, this matter is before the court on the objections filed by plaintiff Amanda Sorda to. I'm not sure if it's a recommended order, but an order issued by the front of the court uh, magistrate adjourning a show cause hearing to January 24th, uh, 2024. In any event, uh, the hearing is being conducted via Zoom. The president is the Monroe County Front of the Court Attorney, Rebecca Hicks. Good morning, Ms. Hicks. Good morning, Your Honor. In addition, the uh, plaintiff, Amanda Sorter, uh, is present.
Um, the defendant, Devin Martin, is present uh, personally this morning. He indicated he didn't realize uh, that this was Zoom, even though North Superior says Zoom. Um, in any event, rather than send him downstairs to confer with everyone in a breakout room, I just want to have him uh, before the court and we can just uh, address this matter correctly. Um, the court is aware there is an arrearage. Um, and obviously, in this story, you file this objection because you don't think the front of the court is enf enforcing these orders uh, sufficiently no. to your satisfaction? No. Okay. What's, uh, what's the basis for your objection? He cannot make payments two months in a row. Um, he has lied under oath numerous times with the referee, and no punishment has been brought to him. Okay, you broke up. You're concerned the front of the court should not be adjourning these things, that they should be tougher in their enforcement. Is that your position? Correct. Correct. All right. All right. That's what I assumed. Um, so the there was a show cause hearing on January 24th. What happened? That's now February 7th. What happened that uh, that time of six? On January you cannot 24th? make another payment. Okay. Hold on, Ms. Order. The court has a question for Ms. X. Ms. X, is there a new date? Uh, no, Your Honor. Once an objection is filed, that hearing didn't get held. So there was no hearing on January 24th because Ms. Sorter filed an objection to that recommendation that did not become an order. And so this is the next court date that got scheduled based um, on their hearings, on their docket. Okay. All right. You probably should have left that hearing date on, uh, Ms. Sorter. But anyway, it's before this court. Uh, Miss Hicks, um, uh, what what did what did the record show the current arrears to be in the part of Mr. Martin? Um, the current arrears balance in total, not all is owed to Miss Sorter, but the total balance is three thousand three hundred and thirty dollars and ninety four cents, Your Honor. How much of that is owed to Miss Sorter? Two thousand three hundred and forty one dollars and fifty six cents. Okay. All right. And the, what's the current uh, support obligation? There is none, Your Honor. This is an arrears only case currently. Oh, gotcha, arrears only. Um, when was the last payment made by Mr. Martin? November of last year on this case, Your Honor, in the amount of $270. November of 2023, it's now February. Uh, All right, um, Mr. Martin, uh, you are Devin Martin for the Rocky Crack. Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Martin, you said you made a payment today? Yes, sir. How much did you pay today? Um, How much I did apologize, you pay today, Your Honor. That one hadn't cleared, so it didn't show. I see it. $100? Yes, sir. Oh, my uh, God. I have uh, the courts, no, but I have another case also that I'm on probation board in Monroe County. Um, what, a felony out support or a criminal case? Um, it's it's for my arrears. It's a, I'm on, yeah, felony support. Felony out support? Okay. So, yeah. so again, you're, you're making payments in that case to avoid going to prison, correct? Um, I mean, I'm trying to. The work's been rough for me. I've paid, uh, I had a uh, mess up back in September that I got arrested for, so I had to bond out on that. So that's why a big portion got paid on that case. Okay. Um, and then, like I said, I just, work's been rough for me, and I've been trying to find a different job. I've worked with my brother. Things ain't been going well for him, so I've been on Indeed trying to find another job. In the meantime, I mean, I don't have a vehicle either, but I was incarcerated. I came home last June. I got out and then uh, went back with my brother, but things haven't been, I mean, okay. too good or really steady. Mr. Martin, I'm going to give you a, the Twitter report is a four page list. They update this monthly of employers that are screwing for employees. I did your job today. You can't wait for your dream job. You can work out for your brother on the side, but you need to have a regular, you need to make regular monthly payments. I mean, I left the record flock the court's handing Mr. Martin a copy of this job posting as of February 1st. The updates every month. Um, it may not be your dream job. Jack Lawn Service, 100 people, I mean, obviously with the snow, not as much. Michigan bars looking for people to wash dishes. You gotta get something, Mr. Martin. You need to pay on a regular monthly basis. Yes, sir. I understand. Um, again, so. I'm trying to get this all, I mean, all knocked down so I can just be done, you know, and 
get off probation and have it all done. My daughter. You need, you need to pick up weekend jobs. I mean, you know, even temporary jobs. Look at those lists. They're good paying jobs. You don't need, even if you have a felony record, they won't even require drug screens. You oh, look at there, the Southeastern Michigan, there's four pages of list. And they update that every month. So you should be coming every month to um, and contact those, uh, those prospective contacts. Ms. Six, when Mr. Martin makes a payment, like the hundred dollars today, does that apply to the urges? First of all, due to misorder. So as long as he comes in, like he did today, it does, Your Honor. When he comes in and makes a cash payment at the window and specifies that it gets applied to this case, it gets applied strictly to this case. If he were to make payments online, those would get divided mm -hmm. statutorily amongst any cases he has in the state of Michigan. Right, and I understand that, but if he. Uh, in the hundred dollars would it be applied to the merges due to misorder or to the state of Michigan, or is it divided between the uh, misorder and the state of Michigan? Um, well, I'm not. It'll. I can't. I can't say until it happens, Your Honor. We we apply it to her case, but we let the statutes that are basically integrated in our system decide how it goes. The major, because she is owed over two thousand dollars, all of it should be going to her. But I can't say that with 100% certainty, Your Honor, until I see how it gets distributed. Well, can the front of the court override the, the state the state uh, process and make sure that 100% of these words go to misorder first? It should. We can, Your Honor. I can, I can, I okay. can, um, I have to go pull the receipt and mark that, but I can have that program. Okay. Yeah, the court request that any payments made by Mr. Martin first go to Miss Sorter before the state of Michigan. So there's twenty three hundred dollars. There's thirty three hundred dollars in rearages. Twenty three hundred due to Miss Sorter. If you want to get her off your back, you need to you need to come in paid in person. Because if you paid online, it's going to go into the other case yeah, too. I found that out when because I didn't make a payment. Um, I don't know okay. if it, was no, it doesn't matter. You understand you need to make payments in cash in person. Right. Yeah. I the, found uh, out because I paid online okay. but, and more went to the other one. Okay. And I think right. she had only got like fifty dollars. So it was supposed to go to her. The only case that's in front of this court now, you are in front of a criminal court in our case. The only court this court this court's concerned about is this case. So you need to make monthly payments to Miss Order. Cash in front of the court. Yes, sir. Um all right. So uh Miss Order, at least we've addressed that in front of the court from now on. Any any uh, cash payments made, Mr. Um, Martin, on this file, we'll go 100% to you, and then, then after you're paid off, then then we can satisfy the state of Michigan. Okay. Okay? So that's a, a small step in, the, in that direction um, to reduce these rearages, so that $100 will, will go to you. And yes, the court wants Mr. Martin to make regular payments. Uh, yeah. No payments since November is not acceptable, Mr. Martin. Yes, um, you, and there, you got that job list. You come in uh, monthly. And get a new job list. There's no reason why you can't get a job within the next seven days. And you can work with your brother on the side. Yep. Uh, uh, Miss Six, uh, the court would like to, uh, is this on your docket or Mr. McKee's docket? It was on Mr. McKee's docket, Your Honor. He, Mr. Mr. Martin is in show cause status with Mr. McKee on his other matter as well. And so they had both been in front of referee McKee. The objection is in front of you, but if the court is inclined to do some sort of adjournment, the front of the court would request that it go back to referee McKee. Yes, obviously you need to. Uh, the court wants to keep tabs on this. I want uh, the front of the court to yeah. see Mr. I want Mr. Martin to meet for the court every six weeks. And yes. Very before the court, if he's not making those payments. Yes. And this court light a fire under Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin. Yes. Uh, I'd rather see out there working rather than spend time in jail. Let's say that that benefits no one. So, in the front of the court, reach out to your caseworker. Uh, again, I don't know what the other case. The only case this court's concerned about is this this case. Um, so, we're going to put you back. We're going to set another uh, uh, hearing review hearing before Mr. McKee. Um, what do you suggest? So, at thirty days, uh, Miss X. What, what what is the other case scheduled? Um, I'm not sure. I don't have that docket okay. before me, but I can right. do, the I can put this one about 30 days and then allow referee McKee okay. to move them together after that. Right. I, I don't want this put off for two months. I want uh, Mr. Martin to appear before Mr. McKee in about 30 days. He should have a, a, a meaningful employment and should have made a payment in the next 30 days. I'm sorry, Ms. Sorter, is there anything you want to add? Nope. I just want to make sure he continuously makes payments for more than a month at a time. I want it every month. Okay, like the court doesn't disagree, even if it's just a hundred dollars. Mr. Martin is even there's no reason why I can't pay a minimum hundred dollars a month. Um, the sort of have to wait two years to get these verges. 
I don't want her to wait two years. Trust me. I want okay. to get them paid off and be done with it. Okay. And my daughters will be 18 in October. So. Okay. They grow quick. Um, so, um, yeah, please check out this list, Mr. Martin. I, uh, Yeah, a lot of these are sure, the, uh, sure the Yang Feng. That's off the Yang Feng. I believe that's in the industrial park in French Town Township. Right. I'm uh, but I live south. I mean, I don't, like I said, I have no car. South County? I'm down in Vanderbilt. Okay. Uh, it's not that I haven't been trying. Trust me, every day I'm trying. National galvanizing. Is that down, down in South County? No, that's up here in Monroe. Okay. Um, I just applied to fight and steel. Um, okay. I applied for three positions at DTE. Okay. I got a buddy of mine that works at DC up in Detroit. And I'd like to have been applying. Okay, so call up on those, but uh, again, and maybe if you get a job on his business, Monroe, maybe you can find a coworker that will can uh, from South Carolina that can uh, drive you up here. Um, uh, so your license is suspended right now. No. Okay. You I, have, car. I have a work. I mean, I have work privileges. Okay. It's All just right. a means of a vehicle. Okay. My fiance, she's on first shift. We have, I mean, we have a car, but. Okay. Well, um, you got to. I just got to make it work. Um, and then you right, see a lot of these. A lot of these jobs are twenty dollar an hour plus. Um, what about even gas station attendant down in uh, Lambert or, or Temperance? Uh, some people are uh, make it work by riding a bike. Work uh, obviously if it's not a, a long, far distance. Um, yep. What about Kroger? Kroger down here. Sure what about Kroger? Go to the Kroger down there, Bill. I'm not sure what other major employers are down there. Uh, when you go to uh, Michigan Works. Uh, Ms. Hicks, does your office refer people to Michigan Works as well? Um, I mean, yeah, we, Your Honor, we tell them about it. And then once a month, um, we get an email with a calendar from Michigan Works about different things that are going on for that month. Um, if Mr. Martin comes downstairs, we can provide him a copy of the one that we got for this month. Okay. And uh, are they, is that, are they still have an office on Telegraph? I'm not sure 100%, Your Honor, where they are located right now. I know the information is on that calendar that we hand out, though. Okay, so what should Mr. Martin ask for? Just the admission works print out? If he just comes downstairs and asks for me, Your Honor, I can come out and give it hey. to him. That We have a new um, front desk worker that way. I'm not sure she knows where hey. those are kept yet. All right, so get that print out. Mission works. If you have an officer in Monroe, they that's what they did at the job bank. They will help you uh, give some uh, suggestion referrals, especially say, I'm looking for uh, things in Bedford Township. Right. Um, so, what, uh, what date do you have, Miss X? I'm, I'm trying to get the referee's docket out. Give me one more moment. Sorry, Your Honor. All right, so, Miss uh, Sorter, Mr. Martin, the court's going to uh, put this back on Mr. McKee's docket. Um, you both be mailed a notice of a, a future hearing, and hopefully within 30 days, uh, perhaps early March. Okay. Mr. Brownlick, if he does not continue making his $300 payments for the rest, well, $200 for the rest of this month, when we come back, now, if he does not get in any trouble for that, can I object that to come back into your courtroom? I'm sorry, where are you getting the $200 a month figure from? Because he pays $300 a month. That's what he's order to pay not a hundred it's three hundred right. that's i'm not There's, concerned about that case that that's another case and that's before another judge he's not fighting on support i'm concerned about this case this, right that now, is, there's I no think. required there's no required minimum uh, payment on this case because it's only if there's current child support yes would be a mandatory minimum payment mr okay. shorter mr martin is in case he can pay a hundred dollars a month but that but it's not in a court order uh, the court wants him to pay something every month and of course he insists on that so i'm <laughs> So I'm not sure uh, when you get this two hundred dollars a month. That's probably on that case that he's on probation for. No, 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 no. That's not correct. He's ordered to pay me four hundred dollars a month for child support. The rearages should be an extra hundred dollars. So it actually be four hundred. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can't hold on. I can't listen to both at the same time. Mystics, can you explain to the court? Uh, is there a monthly obligation in this case? There is not, Your Honor. No, Miss Sorter. There is not. There used to be. 
prior to his incarceration, there is not a current monthly support obligation. Prior to it going to zero, the monthly support obligation was $326.25. Perhaps that is what Ms. Sorter is thinking of. Okay. But as I stated when I first came on the record, there is no current monthly support obligation on this case. It is an arrears only case at this time. Okay, so how do I start to get my regular monthly as well? That's not what's before the court today. You need to contact your caseworker. You can file a motion um, or see if you're eligible for a review. But there okay. is no monthly support obligation on this case. Oh, well, if I have known that, as soon as he got out of jail, I would have fixed that. So uh, talk with your uh, friend court caseworker, Ms. Sorter. But generally, on arrears only cases, there is no ordered uh, minimum payment per month. The friend of court just, just monitors that there are regular payments. Now, he's got another case, and I don't know the, all the particulars of that other case, that he's probably on probation, and he probably has a court order to pay a minimum amount per month. If not, he could be, uh, uh, probation be violated, he could go to jail or prison. Um, and how much are you required to pay in that case, Mr. Martin? $440 a month. 440 a month, and are you current on that? What's that? Are you current on that case? Yeah. Okay. Well, again, uh, this is a... It's just on arrears. But my child support's done, so it's only arrears. But you're on probation, so that's a little different that's situation. You got to pay 440 a month. That's not down to 8800 Okay. And I'm trying to, like I said, get that paid off and also the 2300 that I owe her. Because my daughter will be 18 in October, and then okay. there won't be no support. Okay. So the courts is going to insist that Mr. Mark pay regular monthly payments, and this court's going to suggest, even though there's no court order, that he pay minimum $100 a month. There's no reason why he can't pay minimum $100 a month. Yeah, that's, yeah. Minimum. I mean, I'm hoping to pay more than that, because I know she's talking about the, like I said, before I had went, the order was three, I was paying 330 before I went to prison, and then whoever, I don't know where the zero support came in or who stopped it. I had just let the courts know that I went, that I was incarcerated, and then they, I believe they stopped. I didn't even oh. know that. They stopped it. So talk to your caseworker, Mr. Or maybe they can help you in terms of how to navigate that. I, I don't, uh, I can't answer your question in that regard, but we're going to keep uh, tabs on uh, Mr. Martin and, and, and uh, he's going to be given a job list. Uh, hopefully he can secure meaningful employment because he's got to, he's got uh, uh, orders uh, from two different courts. <laughs> And, and we've also modified the system. So if he makes any any payments, it will go directly to you. It's not going to state Michigan on this case. So that, okay. that that's going to certainly make a difference as well. The state of Michigan can wait for their thousand, their uh, thousand dollars afterwards, but we first want to get you satisfied. Correct. Thank you. So we're going to give it a, another date about 30 days. Perfect. Your Honor, the next available date we have is March 20th at 1.30 p.m. Right. And that'll be downstairs in front of Mr. Mr. McGee. Mr. McKee, right. So Mr. Martin, you're already prepared for Mr. McKee for another review March 20th at 1 30 p.m. Will Mr. McKee see that the matter has been brought before this court? Yes, Your Honor. I'm gonna prepare an order and upload it for your signature, stating okay. putting what was stated on the record as well as the de novo, and those will all be in the file that he'll review prior to that hearing. Um, any reason, Ms. Six, why the court cannot order that Mr. Martin pay? A minimum hundred dollars per month. He's really willing to do that. No, Your Honor, we okay. can include that that he shall okay. pay at the rate of a hundred dollars per month. Minimum, yeah. minimum, and, and that should be paid uh, to the front of the court, not online, but to the front of the court. Yeah, down. So down. if you if you paid here, go directly to Miss Sorter. Yes, sir. Rather than split between the two cases, or go to State of Michigan. We want to go to her, right. yeah. uh, mother of your child. All right, so Ms. Sir, with those uh, modifications, hopefully that will improve uh, the situation. The court's going to order that he pay minimum hundred dollars minimum uh, per month, and they pay that to, uh, to the Monroe directly in front of the court in cash. Uh, so that is not it's not just split with the other case, and it doesn't and not, not go to state mission. Go to you first. Hopefully, he can get to some meaningful employment and pay more than that. All right, so. <laughs> All right, anything further, Mr. Order? Nope, that's it. Okay, you'll be uh, March 20th, uh, at 3, 1 30 before Mr. McKee. I will be there. Um, so, obviously, you need to make a minimum $100 between now and March 20th, yes, Mr. Sir. Martin, on this case. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, uh, anything further, Ms. Hicks? 
Nothing further, Your Honor. I'm preparing um, two orders, a de novo order and then an enforcement order that will be uploaded. There's no exception, but on page one, Matthew Raymond versus Tara Burke Raymond. For the record, Mr. Mayor, before the court, on the plaintiff of father's objection to a recommended order which modified parenting time, and this hearing is being conducted via Zoom. Is uh, Matthew Raymond uh, present on audio? He's muted. And Mr. Raymond, you're muted. Sorry, I was just working. I don't know what happened between moving from the breakout room to here. All right. Good morning, Ms. Andrus. Good morning, Your Honor. Ma'am, you are Tara Ram Burke Raymond, is that correct? Tyra Burke. Tyra, thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Ms. Raymond. All right, uh, I got it. Called... I figured it out. <laughs> oh, all right, so good. We uh, we just called the case, and the court noted that this matter is being conducted via Zoom, and it's before the court in your objection to a recommend order, which modified uh, defense mother's parenting time. Uh, the uh, Two of you have conferred with Ms. Andrus this morning from the front of the court is part of the court the following recommendation, which is which is somewhat lengthy. So I'm going to um, read this to both of you. The recommendation is that um, the referee re recommend order be modified as follows. That effective February 9th, 2024, which is this Friday, mother shall have a party time every other weekend, Friday at 7 until Sunday at 7. So it does expand her weekends. Uh, to Sunday at 7, and then effective uh, February 13th, 2024, which is a Tuesday. Mother shall have every Tuesday and Wednesday overnight from and after school on Tuesday until Thursday at the beginning of school. If there is no school, the party shall uh, arrange week weekday parenting time. The, each party shall provide their own transportation of the minor child. Uh, the party shall share holidays as they can agree. If they cannot agree, then they'll fall back. We will be the Monroe County Friendly Court holiday schedule. Further, the parties agree that motion should be granted to make up parenting time this Thursday, which is February 8th, from 5.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Further, that in the event that Gavin's grades uh, drop or decrease, parties agree to put to Gavin in, in the tutoring program. Further, father shall schedule a doctor's appointment for Gavin's toe by the end of this week and notify mother of the appropriate of the appointment time and dates. And uh, this recommendation, if adopted, will settle all uh, existing parenting time issues and complaints between the parties. That is a recommendation. Mr. Raymond, do you understand the recommendation? I do. Are you agreeable with the court adopting this recommendation? Yes. All right. Uh, Ms. Burke Raymond, do you understand the recommendation? Yes. Are you also asking the court to adopt this uh, recommendation as an order of the court? Yes. Okay. Uh, the court would note that the, the letter from your psychiatrist, uh, Ms. Raymond, that you provided is uh, almost a year old. That's uh, May of 2023. But obviously, uh, you received a copy of that letter, Mr. Raymond, and you are uh, you are satisfied with it that she's yes. Miss Burke is uh, is addressing your issues. Yes. And uh, um, okay. Well, uh, what about church on Sundays? That's important. I mean, you took uh, uh, the children to church every Sunday, Mr. Raymond. Uh, these alternate weekends, uh, is Miss Raymond going to get the children to school? Or are you going to pick them up for, for church? Uh, I actually am the one that attends the church. I understand. Well, well, don't the children go with you? Yes, the children go with me uh, right now uh, because I do have them on Sundays as of right now. Um, so they do go. They do go with me to church. Right, and that, but the court's question was, of course, this, this schedule changes on alternate weekends, and mom's got the children Sunday morning. So, right. will, will mom get them to church, or are they just not go to church, or is not is, is that not an issue? I believe we worked it out uh, with between myself and Miss Burke. Okay, uh, so it's not so you know it's not part of the court order. If in fact you want to pick up the children on Sunday morning, take them to church, uh, and if she says no, you understand it's not part of this order. Yeah, correct. Okay, so you're agreeable then. You don't want anything in writing then in terms of uh, transporting the children to church, correct? No, I believe that Ms. Burke and I can work that out. 
All right. So the Miss Burke course is saying, obviously, if the children go to regular church with dad, <clears throat> you should make that happen. Whether you take your children or you drop them off at dad's or drop them off at church when they meet dad in the parking lot uh, and wait till the church service is done, that's important. Um, yeah, your children are they're growing up quickly, 16 and 12. Yes. Uh, but it's wonderful the two of you can agree upon what's best for them. So, again, uh, beginning this weekend, um, Mom will have plenty of time every other weekend, um, Fridays at 7 till Sundays at 7. You'll agree upon transportation, correct? So you'll agree yes. upon who's going to pick up, who's going to drop off. And then um, effective next Tuesday, February 13th, Mother shall have Tuesday and Wednesday overnights. She'll take pick up uh, after school on Tuesday. Um, and obviously in summertime, you've got to agree upon a time. Uh, if there's no school, what time Mom will pick them up on Tuesdays. Correct. Eight or nine o'clock on Tuesday mornings, the drop off. And then, of course, during the school year, mom will pick them up on Tuesday after school. We'll uh, bring them back to school Thursday morning. Correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Raymond, do you have any questions for the court? No, I do not. Do you believe that this uh, revised party time schedule is the best interest of your ch two children? Yes. All right. Um, Ms. Raymond, same question to you. Do you believe this uh, revised parenting time schedule to be, be in the best interest of your children? Yes. And uh, you're asking the court to adopt this. Is that correct? Yes. yes. All right. All right uh, um, obviously, kids, it's important uh, if Gavin needs tutoring, help out. It's a critical time of their education. And uh, very well. Uh, the court uh, will applaud both of you for reaching your own agreement. Thank you, uh, Ms. Andrus, for your assistance. Um, the court, again, applauds you. It's huge until you can agree upon these things rather than have the court decide this. So the court, with pleasure, will adopt the recommendation book, mail the copy. And that will conclude the series. You can both zoom out. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you. You too. Before the court on the uh, plaintiff filed a motion to modify custody. This hearing is being conducted via Zoom. Uh, present is Attorney Christina Hills. Representing the plaintiff, Father Seth Evans. Mr. Evans is present. In addition, Attorney Ronald Bruce is present. Representing the defendant, Mother Jessica Brubaker. And Ms. Brubaker is present. The recommendation of Mr. Pratt this morning is after spring break 2024. Father shall pick up the minor child on March 22nd, 2024, after school. And uh, the child will remain in his custody and possession until Easter Sunday, 6 p.m. If the court recalls the parties make the exchanges in somewhere in the Sandusky, Ohio area, somewhere between Monroe and Cleveland, is that correct? It is, Your Honor. Further, the parties have agreed to mediate with Ms. Sopat on March 28th, 2024 at 1.30 p.m. If the minor child is pulled out of school or any school-sponsored event, this information shall be communicated to the defendant father as soon as the decision is made for the child not to attend. Um, that is recommendation. Ms. Hills, does this recommendation agree with your client? Yes, Your Honor, it is. Uh, Mr. Bruce, does this recommendation agree with your client this morning? Yes, Judge. All right, uh, Ms. Hills, do you wish to board dear Mr. Evans regarding this recommendation this morning? No, Your Honor, thank you. All right, Mr. Bruce, do you wish to board dear your client? Oh, thank you. Uh, I know that the parties have engaged in mediation in the past. Is that correct? And it's not been successful. And that's what prompted you, Ms. Hills, to file this motion to modify custody. Um, we, we haven't mediated in a long time, Your Honor. We've had a series of reviews um, and short meetings uh, with friend of the court prior to uh, review hearings. Um, after speaking with my client most recently, um, he is willing to take another shot at seeing if things can be worked out. Um, I believe with the help of Ms. LaPrade, we may be able to um, help work some of their issues out, um, if not all of them. But I certainly felt after talking with my client that it was worth a shot prior to asking the court to schedule a trial. Very well. Unfortunately, the court will not be available March 28th. I'll be out of the jurisdiction, but you can re-notice it uh, for hearing thereafter, Ms. Hills. Yes, Your uh, Honor. The court's opinion, I'm familiar with the case, if in fact, um, uh, certainly there should be some modification of parenting time. Whether it's additional parenting time for dad during the summer months, where things can be more flexible, uh, but I, I won't, won't go any farther than that at this point in time. So just a suggestion. An observation on the part of the court. All right. Anything further from your uh, from you, Mr. Bruce? No, okay, Judge. Thanks. All right. Uh, hopefully, uh, with Miss uh, Lepraz's capable assistance, parties can reach an agreement to move forward um, with their parenting time in custody of their daughter. All right. 
Now concludes the matter of the court will adopt the recommendation, copy mailed out. Now conclude this hearing. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Thank Honor. You, Your Honor. Welcome. Welcome. Well, for the record, this matter is before the court on the plaintiff's subject to a recommended order, which denied her motion to modify child support. And this hearing is being conducted via Zoom. Is uh, the petitioner, uh, Melinda Gallet, present on audio? Ms. Gallet, are you present on audio? Good morning, Ms. Anderson. It appears uh, that uh, we don't have a satisfactory proof of service. Um, on, your on your de novo, there's a proof of service. Somebody from the front of the court enforcement aid mailed that out from the last hearing on January 24th. <laughs> I'm sorry, you indicated the front of the court to mail out this objection and notice the hearing? Correct. From January 24th, it was adjourned for a front of the court to serve defendant, and there's a proof of service on the bottom of the de novo that it was uh, sent out. Okay. Let's see, let's see if I can find that. Yes, I do see that. Yes, it was adjourned mm -hmm. to today's date. And mm -hmm. it looks like Mr. Gigard served. Okay. And the defendant failed to appear. Are you Melinda Gullett? Yeah. Yeah, I don't you... have... yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can hear you. All right. So it appears uh, that this matter is before the court and your objection to a recommended uh, order denying motion by modified child support. You failed to appear for that review. Um, the matter was adjourned to today's date so that uh, we could get proper service. The mailing of this notice to Mr. Tolliver. Uh, that was done by the front of the court. Mr. Tolliver has failed to appear for this hearing scheduled at 11 o'clock. It's now 11.30. Mr. Tolliver is not appeared. He's not contacted the court. So at this time, the court will enter an order rescinding that recommended order and to refer the issue of child support to the front of the court for a formal investigation and recommendation uh, with each party having 21 days in which to object. Do you understand the recommendation, Ms. Gullet? Yes, Jim. Any objection to the court adopting the recommendation? No. All right. You need to cooperate and respond. Um, they're going to send out, front of the court will send out questionnaires to both you and Mr. Tolliver. They'll make a recommendation. If you disagree with the recommendation, they need to follow a written objection within seven day, within 21 days. Uh, but make sure you uh, timely and promptly cooperate and provide the financial information the front of the court seeking. I can only provide what I can. I mean, I, I don't really, he, he goes, okay. he goes everywhere, you know, I... Hey, well, you need to provide if Mr. Lucy, you can't control what Mr. Tolliver does, but you need to promptly respond yeah. to their uh, their request for information. All right, yeah. the court will adopt the recommendation. You'll be mailed a copy of this, uh, Ms. Uh, Gallet. And that will conclude this hearing. All right, you can zoom out. Thank you, Ms. Andrus. Thank you, Honor. Okay, what I do? Um, I'm sorry? Uh, um, what do I do? Uh, so I'm going to get something. nothing. The front of the court will mail out forms to you that you need to complete and provide uh, copies of your tax return, for example, a copy of your, your W-2s, copy of your 1099s. And same thing with Mr. Oliver. you got to provide financial information. The front of the court will do a formal uh, rec investigation recommendation. They'll issue a written recommendation. They'll you copy that, and you got 21 days in which to object. Otherwise, it comes in order to court automatically, okay? Okay. 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 You're, all right, you're all set, ma'am. For the record, this matter is before the court and the plaintiff's objection to a front of the court child support recommendation. Uh, this hearing is being conducted via Zoom. President is attorney Barry Fain, representing the plaintiff, Jordan Salowski. Good afternoon, Mr. Fain. Good afternoon, Your Honor. In addition, attorney Ronald Bruce is present, representing the defendant, Charles, is it pronounced Newth or Knuth? Knuth, yep. Knuth, right. Um, so the parties uh, have conferred with Ms. Andrus for the front of the court this afternoon. Ms. Andrus has provided the court the following recommendation uh, that the uh, parties agree that the defendant shall uh, pay plaintiff $500 a month, effective March 1st, 2024. Uh, any arrears for support, child support, medical support, and fees shall reflect a zero balance as of February 29th, 2024. And attorney uh, Fain shall prepare a stipulation order as well as revised uniform child support order. That is a recommendation. Uh, Mr. Fain, is this recommendation agreeable with your client this afternoon? It is, Your Honor. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bruce, is this recommendation agreeable with your client? It is, Judge. Thank you. Uh, 
Mr. Fain or Mr. Bucci, either we want to board your respective clients. The court recognized they both participated in the discussions. Uh, I don't believe that that's necessary, Your Honor. Mr. Bruce? No, thank you. All right. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Anders, for your assistance. Uh, uh, the court will adopt the recommendation copy mailed out to counsel. And that will conclude this matter. Mr. Fain, you'll prepare the uniform uh, child support order, which will be uh, necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Have a good day. You're welcome. We can, we can zoom out at the rest of the day. Thank <laughs> you.